Hello students, in today's video we are going to study pharmacology of bradykinin and calidin. Now bradykinin and calidin are plasma kinins. Now why pharmacology of uh, these agents is important? Now plasma kinins are inflammatory mediators. They are produced in large quantities during inflammation. By now we know what is inflammation. Inflammation is the edema or it is the swelling. Now, this edema or the swelling occurs because of tissue injury. So, these kinins, they are produced in large quantities during inflammation. And these kinins, they further enhance or we can say accelerate or increase the process of inflammation. Now, they can increase the inflammation or inflammatory response to such an extent that they can cause angioedema. Angioedema is a swelling which can be seen throughout the body. Most commonly it is a swelling of lips, eyes, face. Now swelling of the airways or the swelling of upper respiratory tract causes difficulty in breathing. So this can be life threatening. Now apart from this excessive, excessive accumulation of bradykinin in the lungs causes dry cough. Now, excess production of bradykinin uh, results in angioedema. So, bradykinin or calidin should not be produced in the body in the large amount. Uh, these kinins, they should not accumulate in the body. Now, uh, these kinins, they are the polypeptides or we can say they are the proteins which are made up of amino acids. And these are derived from the plasma protein uh, which is known as kininogen. So, these Kinins are synthesized from protein called as kininogen. Now, as discussed uh, physiologically or normally, only small amounts of kinins are produced, but large quantities of kinins are produced during inflammation. Uh, now, this inflammation can be because of tissue injury, it can be because of any allergic reaction, inflammation can be because of ischemia that is reduced blood supply to a tissue. Inflammation can be because of infection or because of the burns. So in all these cases, there is excessive or large uh, uh, production of kinins. And once produced, they, ki these kinins, they further enhance or accelerate the process of inflammation. Now these kinins are very potent vasodilators and mediators of inflammation. Now look at this figure. This figure explains the synthesis and breakdown or metabolism of kinins. Now, bradykinin is a nanopeptide. It is made up of 9 amino acids. Calidin is a decapeptide made up of 10 amino acids. Now, these kinins are produced from kininogen. Kininogen is a protein found in the plasma. Now, the blood consists of high molecular weight as well as low molecular weight kininogens. And from this, these kininogens are produced the kinins. Now, an inactive enzyme called as precalicrin is present in the plasma. Now, this is activated by the clotting factor 12A. It is activated uh, to its active form that is the calicrin. Now, plasma calicrin converts high molecular weight kininogen to bradykinin, while the tissue calicrin converts high molecular weight as well as low molecular weight kininogen to calidin. So, bradykinin as well as calidin are produced from kininogen, and kininogen is present in the plasma. Now, calidin is a decapeptide that means it is made up of 10 amino acids whereas bradykinin is a nanopeptide that is made up of 9 amino acids. So removal of one amino acid from the calidin by the enzyme aminopeptidase produces bradykinin. So bradykinin is synthesized from high molecular weight kininogen as well as from the calidin. Now let's understand 
metabolism or the breakdown of kinins. Now, kinins are rapidly metabolized, their half life is one minute. Now, the main enzyme that breaks these kinins is the kininase 2. Now, this kininase 2 is also called as ACE or angiotensin converting enzyme. So, this kininase 2 or angiotensin converting enzyme breaks bradykinin as well as calidine and convert these kinins to inactive peptides. Now here very important to understand that the use of ACE inhibitors, drugs that inhibit angiotensin converting enzyme, inhibit the breakdown of bradykinin as well as calidine. So angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors cause accumulation or increase in the level of bradykinin in the body. Now, increased bradykinin can cause angioedema and dry cough. Now, another enzyme that is the kininase 1 is expressed during inflammation. Important to remember that this kininase 1 is produced during inflammation. Now, kininase 1 removes one amino acid arginine from bradykinin. So, bradykinin is converted into desarginine bradykinin. Now, the same enzyme kininase 1 removes one amino acid from the calidine and the calidine is converted into desarginine calidine. Now, both these are active metabolites and both these metabolites, they mediate the process of inflammation. However, these metabolites, they are further uh, metabolized by the enzyme peptidases to inactive peptides. So, this is how these kinins are uh, broken down in the body. These kinins are metabolized. Now, let's see to the pharmacological actions of kinins. Now, bradykinin as well as calidine have similar action. Another important thing to remember over here is this that normally small quantities of kinins are produced but during inflammation, large quantities of kinins are produced. Now, first is the effect of kinins on the cardiovascular system. Now, kinins are potent vasodilators. They are even more potent vasodilators than histamine. And these kinins, they dilate the arterioles. Now, as we know, arterioles are the smaller blood vessels. These are the branches of the arteries. Now, look at this figure. This is a normal blood vessel and this is a dilated blood vessel. There is increase in the diameter of blood vessel. Volume of blood that flows through the dilated blood vessel increases. Now, all of us know that the innermost lining of the wall of blood vessel is called as endothelium. Now, these kinins, they stimulate the release of endothelium derived relaxing factor that is nitric oxide and prostacyclin from the endothelium. And both these factors, that is nitric oxide as well as prostacyclin, cause vasodilation. Now, kinins, as we know, are inflammatory mediators and very potent vasodilation induced by large quantities of kinin causes the inflammatory response. Now, second is the effect on smooth muscles. Now, kinins contract smooth muscle cells of the bronchial tract and thus kinins induce bronchoconstriction in asthmatic patients leading to difficulty in breathing. Now, due to bronchoconstriction, airway or the respiratory tract becomes very narrow and this causes difficulty in the passage of air in and out of the lungs and therefore the patient is unable to breathe properly. Now, afferent or the sensory nerve endings which are found in the skin are strongly, are strongly stimulated by the kinins. Now, stimulation of these nerve endings produce the pain and the burning sensation. Now, in addition to this, kinins also stimulate or induce the release of prostaglandins. Now, these prostaglandins also produce pain. These prostaglandins are also the mediators of pain. So, overall, kinins are very strong vasodilators. They induce bronchoconstriction and these 
are responsible for the feeling of pain. They cause pain. Now next is the effect of kinins on the kidneys. Now as kinins are vasodilators, they increase renal blood flow. They increase the flow of blood to the kidneys. Now kinins also induce diuresis. That means they increase the volume of urine. Now they increase the volume of, in, of urine by increasing the excretion of sodium and water by the kidneys. Now kinins cause uh, natriuresis. Now natriuresis is the presence of sodium in the urine. Now since kinins increase excretion of sodium, this causes presence of sodium in the urine and this produces nat natriuresis. Now let's talk about the kinin receptors. There are two types of kinin receptors B1 and B2. Now B1 receptors are induced or they are produced or expressed only during inflammation. So B1 receptors are responsible for chronic inflammation and pain. Whereas B2 receptors are constitutive. Normal physiological actions of kinins are produced by the activation of B2 receptors. So as discussed, physiologically only small amount of kinin is generated and all the pharmacological actions of kinins are mediated by B2 receptors. But during inflammation, large quantities of kinins are generated. There is induction of B1 receptors. Kinin produce their actions by stimulating B1 receptors and stimulation of B1 receptors causes chronic inflammation and pain. So this is in brief on the pharmacology of kinins, uh, namely bradykinin and calidin. If you find the video useful, kindly like, subscribe and share this video. Thanks for watching this video.